Hey, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, it's here morning on the east, on the West Coast. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started while people still might be logging in because we don't want to waste any time um, to get to our panelists. So hello and welcome to our last Race in the PR Classroom of 2020, Professionals Teaching in the Classroom, um, presented by the Institute for Public Relations and the PRSA Educators Academy. My name is Dean Mundy. I'm the PR Area Director at the University of Oregon um, School of Journalism. Um, chair until tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I am this year's chair of the PRSA Educators Academy. Um, thank you so much for joining us and for supporting us as we are continuing the series. Um, we're excited to bring you more race in the PR classroom topics in the new year with some great speakers and great topics. Um, today I'd like to welcome our host, Dr. Erica Sutherland, Marketing National Black Caucus Foundation. Janine Cargo, adjunct public relations professor at North Carolina Central University and owner of Cargo and Company Events, Vanessa Copeland, public information officer at Virginia Department of Fire Programs, and Vanessa Wakeman, CEO of the Wakeman Agency. Thank you all for joining us today and taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, before we begin, I'd like to remind you that this is a Q&A type forum. Um, to ask a question, you can type it in the chat or virtually raise your hand using the raise your hand function. Um, if you'd like to um, ask a question anonymously, just type the message to the host in the chat and we'll read your question aloud. Um, only the moderators are able to see your question, um, so you will remain anonymous. Um, if you're tweeting about the discussion, please use the hashtag um, RPRC for Race in the PR Classroom. Um, this discussion is being recorded and will be available for playback on the IPR website. And we'll also send you an email when the playback is available. Lastly, please remain respectful to our hosts and panelists and others on the call by keeping yourself muted at all times, unless you intend to speak or ask a question. And so now I will turn it over to Tina, who I think is gonna kick us off with some questions for the panelists. Tina, over to you. Scotty, I, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. I see some head nods, which is always good. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, it's still morning for me, so I hope you're all doing well today. Thanks again to our panelists. So what I wanted to do was first start with getting an idea of uh, who our panelists are, where they work, and where they uh, are adjunct. Vanessa was a professor in residence. So I just want them to tell us a little bit about that, because this special series is specifically about professionals who teach in our classroom. So Janine, why don't we start with you? Sure. So um, for the past three years, I've served as the Wells Fargo Endowed Chair at North Carolina Central University, um, an HBC, HBCU in um, North Carolina, obviously. Um, and prior to that, I have spent time um, obviously working professionally for several different brands. And I know we'll talk more about our experiences, but um, just major corporate brands. So that's my background. Aikman? Hello, everyone. I'm Vanessa Wakeman. Um, I am the founder and CEO of a social change company called the Wakeman Agency. I'm based in New York. Uh, and last year for the 2019-2020 school year, I had the, um, the privilege of being a visiting professor at the University of Florida in their uh, College of Journalism and Communications. And I um, look forward to chatting with you all about that experience today. Uh, Dr. Sutherland. Good morning or afternoon, everyone, depending on where you're located. I am currently a lecturer um, as an adjunct in the Georgetown University Public Relations and Corporate Communication pro graduate program. And my experience entails um, a mix of teaching in academia full time and part time, as well as in the industry, primarily in nonprofit, um, as well as some corporate, government, and university relations experience. And my current uh, professional role is with the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. Great. I'm Vanessa Copeland. Hi, hello everyone. Um, I am a public information officer with the Virginia Department of Fire Programs, which is a state government training agency located in central Virginia. Um, from 2015 to 2019, I was an adjunct professor at Virginia Commonwealth University, where I taught undergraduate and graduate PR courses. Okay, so each and every one of you are really busy professionals. 
and yet you chose to adjunct and it's a lot of work and typically not a lot of pay for the amount of work that you do. So why don't you each tell us a little bit about what inspired you to become an adjunct. So uh, we'll go, uh, I'll mix this up as we go. So Vanessa Copeland, why don't we start with you? Sure. I decided to teach because within the public relations track at VCU at the time, there weren't many people of color. And having returned to VCU, I went there as an undergraduate student where I majored in radio and television broadcasting. Then I returned as a master's uh, program student. Um, there wasn't much representation, um, people that looked like me. And I've always wanted to teach. So after I earned my master's, I inquired about teaching and wanted to return to VCU. Um, you know, my alma mater and, and teach there in the undergraduate track. Um, and it's been very rewarding, or it was at the time. I'm taking a break now. I hope to return to teaching very soon. Um, I, I love having the mix of working professionally full time and applying what I do every day as a PIO or PR representative, and then applying that in the classroom. So topical examples just they 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 come alive there in the classroom because you know I just went through it at work just you know four hours prior to coming to class so it, it makes for a good mix. That's great and uh, we'll go to the next Vanessa because Vanessa you had an interesting experience because you went and taught for a year as a professional in residence so uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, what inspired you to do that? Yes. Uh, so I wanted to teach for a long time. As I thought for most of my uh, childhood and as a young adult that I was going to be a teacher. And once I got into corporate America, that sort of shifted gears. I got uh, the golden handcuffs, as they say. Uh, but when this opportunity came along to teach at uh, UF, I thought that it would be great to sort of see if I still had <clears throat> a real passion and love and desire to teach as I'm thinking about maybe, you know, my exit from my agency in the future. Um, and also was curious to get a sense of um, the sort of like the pipeline of talent. And I figured what better way to also see like, you know, what the students are thinking about and like what their experience is. And so for me, I think um, I look at it in some ways as a, a field study on both sides. Being in the classroom um, definitely gave me an opportunity to connect with students and get a sense of like what their needs were. And particularly for the students of color, the black and brown students at the school, um, <clears throat> I was struck by like how hungry they were and eager and excited that they were uh, to sort of see a professor of color. In, in many instances, I was the first for uh, some of them. And then for my agency sort of trying to um, think about what were the things that we should be prepared for as an agency for the students that were coming into the practice and into the profession. And so uh, I think that there is a bit of a disconnect between, at least for me and the students that I've met and the sort of early entry professionals that I've met, a disconnect between like what their expectations are of sort of, you know, entry level PR and what our expectations are of them as people entering the field. And so being able to help to give them a more realistic perspective of what they should be thinking about. Um, something as simple as pitching. So I had students who um, thought that they would never have to pitch in an entry level uh, position, which is just not going to happen in most agencies. And so really trying to help set their expectations. Um, and then also what, what I felt was most beautiful in that experience was um, helping students to be seen and heard. Like I heard from so much feedback from a lot of my students that um, they felt very seen and heard in my class and that was really important to me. Yes, uh, Nikki Caceres, who's our IPR comms manager was saying when she was at school how important adjuncts were because of their tie to the profession and the work that they, they do. They feel like they're, they're very ingrained in it. Uh, all right, uh, how about you, Janine? Sure. So. Um, then I found, um, like most people would say, um, that as a woman of color, uh, coming through school, didn't really see a lot of myself. Entering into the corporate world, that kind of stayed a theme where I'd be one of only. Um, and so, in fact, when I chose to go to North Carolina Central University as an undergrad, I did that um, to kind of reverse that, have the opportunity to be around people that kind of look like me. 
Um, I know that when I went to American University, the demographics kind of changed and, um, you know, I kind of returned to being um, in my graduate program, one of only again. Um, but I came through a um, working professional program and I found that um, a lot of my professors that I related the, the best with were ones that could actually give me real world um, advice and real world um, examples and experience through class. And so it was something that really inspired me, not just to learn theories, and, and but also like have some hands-on work in real life projects. Um, so back in, I believe it was 2000 and, ooh, feels like a long time ago, maybe 16, 15, something like that. Um, I was doing some agency work and one of my jobs at the agency, um, I was trying to kind of bring in some interns so we could have some fresh faces and reached out to North Carolina Central University because it was my alma mater. And the professor I reached out to, um, Roderick, was able to bring her class over um, and do an agency tour and really just kind of like introduced them to agency life. And from then, I said, you know, I'd really like the opportunity to get back. I know when I was an undergrad, um, our school's not really one of the first ones on a stop of like, say, you know, a catch them coming to come and, uh, you know, recruit for talent or, you know, any sort of big names. And so I thought, you know, let me be able to give these students the experience that I didn't have because now I'm in a place where I can give back. Um, and so the teaching was just a natural extension of that to say, you know, not just bring you in as an intern, entry level talent, but also can I come back and start with, you know, the undergrads really to teach them about PR so that coming out, they really understand what it means and become more of a um, viable candidate to even be brought in on an agency setting or a corporate setting for entry level. Okay, Dr. Sutherland. Okay, similar to what uh, many of my other colleagues on this panel have said, I too started teaching at my alma mater, which is Hampton University. And I was a working professional first. As I mentioned, I've um, told the line between being a full-time and part-time professor and professional. Um, my mix changes depending on what year it is. Uh, but I really overall um, have appreciated that mix because I think that having an eye on and an impact in academia, as well as you know, continuing to grow and learn and experience um, different things professionally is really beneficial to the classroom and the educational experience. And um, I have found through the different students that I've taught over the years, and I've taught um, undergraduates through doctoral students, um, they all seem to appreciate, or most of them, you know, <laughs> um, seem to appreciate um, the different experiences that not only I have brought to the class, but guest speakers, examples, um, and other experiences that I've brought to the class. And that typically tends to be one of their favorite takeaways is the, the practical experience, whether it came through my personal experience or otherwise. Um, but in getting started at Hampton, I was not too newly <laughs> graduated a few years out, I believe, and working um, still in that Hampton Roads, Virginia area. And I went to, um, similar to some of the others, one of my former professors, and I saw, I believe, online an advertisement for an adjunct. And I said, what about me, basically? You know, we had a conversation. I had no clue of what it meant to be a professor or design a syllabus or anything like that. Um, but I knew that it sounded interesting, one. And then I really thought I had something to offer. Um, and I literally, especially that first semester, I was literally bringing examples from my work that day to class that evening. Um, and so it was literally real time um, education straight from the profession. Um, and from then, um, I just grew to love it. Um, I got bit by the bug and I decided to, you know, continue my, my own educational um, path and pursue the professor at full time and, and while always keeping a, whether it's freelance or project work, um, et cetera, um, keeping an, an arm and a foot in the profession. Um, because again, I, I think that mix is, is really special and really beneficial on both ends, honestly. Um, and I still keep in touch with many of um, so I have students who 
um, from the undergrad programs, masters and doctoral are doing really, really impactful. I won't drop any names because I haven't gotten their permission, but um, who are doing really impactful things in, in corporate America, in academia as scholars, um, in, in education themselves, um, across the board. And I, I love keeping in touch with them. We still talk and we learn from each other to this day. And that is just something that, again, helps start my experience and it's still part of my experience. Okay, great. So uh, uh, you all taught at very different institutions, uh, Virginia Commonwealth, Hampton, North Carolina Central, University of Florida. So do you want to tell us, also, do you want to tell us from both a race and gender lens, what your experience was teaching at the different institutions as an adjunct? Um, we'll start with uh, Vanessa Wakeman. To the PR profession, um, definitely very female. The majority of the students were female. Um, it was typical. I don't think I had any class that had more than four male students, um, and the maximum students I taught in each class was about 19. So very uh, female heavy. And uh, gender, uh, excuse me, race. Um, I think the uh, program had about 8% uh, 6% black, 8% Latinx, or maybe that's the reverse, um, but predominantly white. And I, I think um, what I was struck by was um, the, the, the sense or the, the, the interest for the students of color to um, feel a sense of belonging. And so in some of my classes, I tried to create opportunities for that. So making sure that the curriculum was definitely inclusive, that we spoke about um, issues that allow people to sort of have their voices heard. Um, we did a lot of similar to what um, Erica mentioned about like literally running from, you know, with issues from work to take it into the classroom. I did that as well. So my firm works primarily on social justice causes, um, but really wanting to make sure that uh, there was more uh, cultural competency and more awareness in the classroom so that they could have sort of um, different perspectives and different opinions and sort of be able to use that as a learning experience. How do you work on a team, um, you know, when there is a lack of diversity? How do you make sure that, you know, you are speaking to the language of the people that you're trying to reach? And so really trying to um, informed them, not just sort of have them respond to the questions I was asking, but really helping to like inform and shape their thinking. Um, I think that was really important. Uh, I think the other thing that uh, was interesting to me is outside of just the, the classroom part of it, also thinking about like the faculty and staff, some of those same sort of like gender and racial um, percentages were present in faculty. I was the, as I mentioned, the first, or oh, the only um, black professor for the public relations program. And so even students from other departments were interested in, you know, getting to know me and, you know, sort of sought my advice out. And so it was even beyond CJC, there were um, students from the business school and other schools really just wanting to sort of um, have someone to speak and sort of, you know, get advice from that looked like them or the, who they thought could sort of offer them some support in their journey. Um, and it really sort of reflected back to me the importance of um, like my my responsibility as a professor there. So I think that the program itself has done a, a really good job of sort of understanding the places where um, there's opportunities for improvement. Um, I think that the student groups certainly have created uh, ways for students to sort of come together and feel that sense of belonging, but I think there's a lot uh, to be done, and not just on that campus, on other campuses, to sort of really make sure that there's sort of equity um, and a, that true sense of belonging for everyone who is sort of pursuing the educational um, journey. What about you, Dr. Sutherland? Sure. Well, um, as I mentioned, I've taught at several different universities, HBCUs, PWIs, um, across, I would say, the Mid-Atlantic and the Deep South, um, including um, LSU. I saw a Go Gators in the chat, so I'm going to say Go Tigers. <laughs> but um, in addition to that, um, my experience in terms of being a Black woman in the classroom, of course, has varied. Um, I think at the PWIs, I think 
as uh, Vanessa Wakeman said, offering that different perspective, that different face, that different voice, that different experience um, is really uh, beneficial um, to, <laughs> I see the comment, yes, go SEC, um, beneficial to students in those classrooms where they may be a minority in one way or the other. The PR profession, just like many of our classes, um, is very, um, heavily weighted toward women. Um, so women tend not to be the minority in a PR classroom, um, but they may be in various workplaces. And I think Vanessa Wakeman also mentioned um, faculty and staff. And I have worked with a diverse group of faculty and staff where I have found that the higher you go up in the administration, it does tend to be more um, male or um, men uh, heavy with men. Um, so I think there's still a lot of opportunity. There are still some glass ceilings to break on the, the faculty in, um, in terms of more of a balance. But again, just offering that diverse perspective, that mentorship, the mentorship element is my favorite part of teaching, whether the students look like me or have similar backgrounds or aspirations or not. Um, I think that has been really beneficial. And speaking to my experience teaching at HBCUs, what um, one of the um, most impactful experiences I've had is really recognizing, appreciating, and discussing and applying the diversity within an HBCU classroom. I know you all have had a session uh, specifically on HBCUs, but that um, is a common misconception that HBCUs are monolithic, just because everyone may have relatively, or most people may have relatively a similar skin tone, that very well may be where the similarities end um, in terms of background perspective. There are some shared experiences, but um, that doesn't not mean at all that the class um, has a monolithic mindset. And I think discussing that and discussing how those perspectives apply to becoming a professional in the industry um, are really what have driven the classrooms, no matter what type of institution. I think just bringing in the gender perspective, what I have, um, what I have experienced with students, again, on all the levels I've taught at, is with women, again, we may not be the minority in the classroom or even in, in PR workspaces, but I've had different discussions with women. Again, I started very young um, as a, um, a professor, as an adjunct and then becoming full-time and going back adjunct and you know living my own life um, in between there, women tend to want to speak with other women about how to navigate things like working and starting families, working and navigating, um, you know, uh, salary negotiations, um, dealing with um, potential sexism or other isms in the workplace. They tend to want to speak to someone who has experienced this or has at least seen it from the inside. Um, so they know what to expect. They can learn from others' mistakes. Those have been some really beneficial conversations I've had along the way as well. Great. Uh, Vanessa Copeland. You're on mute, Vanessa. <laughs> there we go. All right, um, so let me preface what I'm about to say with, um, as I mentioned earlier, I was an undergraduate student um, at VCU, Virginia Commonwealth, and returned as a master's student. So there was a 12-year gap in between undergraduate, graduate. Um, and I saw the shift. Uh, VCU is in an urban setting um, in Richmond, Virginia, um, and, and had a small pocket of a, a minority or diverse population. And I've seen that grow tenfold the 20 years that I've been here in the Richmond area. So returning as an adjunct professor, the classrooms were different as far as the makeup. So when I was a student, I was probably one of five out of in the broadcasting track that was of color. But returning as a professor and even as a master's student, I saw that maybe 40% of the students in the classroom were of color, some minority. Um, yes, generally more women in the PR track and in the classroom, um, but for me, with the students of color, particularly Black women who saw themselves in me, standing in front of the classroom, being professional, look, if you ask me anything, I'll tell you, but I don't volunteer, uh, but the students, they're very inquisitive and connecting every semester when I taught, I, I gained a mentee, someone that said, take me under your wing, show me what you know. And they were not afraid to ask me, you know, after class or, you know, via email, um, 
the, the nitty gritty questions as a woman of color wanting to work in public relations and, and those experiences. So being able to share that was very important to me um, and continues to be important to me um, to, to, to bridge the gap and to tell them the real deal. Like this is what you may experience as a woman, number one, as a woman of color, uh, day one, um, when you join an agency, when you join state government, um, when you work you know, around men who are much more seasoned than you as far as the profession. So that was pretty rewarding. And VCU as a program, I think with the adjunct base uh, for the PR track, they do have more people that come from diverse backgrounds, be it socioeconomic backgrounds, professionally. And I think that complements the full-time faculty that you know may not be as diverse, but they are growing and, and they want to, to definitely reflect more diversity in the classroom as far as teachers who are front and center to reflect what's happening at least here in on the East Coast, in Richmond, um, no matter where you work in public relations. Uh, Janine. Sure, so um, I would say um, like many peers that look like me, working in public relations, um, for me, my experience had been that oftentimes when I'm in the room, I'm the only female. <laughs> um, one of my one of um, my corporate jobs was working for um, Stanley Black and Decker, which is very you know blue collar male power to consumer power tool, um, white. And so I had a lot of experiences like that professionally, where I was one of only the only black person, the only female, the only person under forty in a room. So coming to the classroom at North Carolina Central University um, was kind of like a homecoming and not just because it was my alma mater. Um, like everyone else that um, has spoken before me, um, you know, my classes were um, really excited to see, my students were really excited to see um, uh, someone that was, they think I'm old, but younger, I think I'm young. <laughs> younger, closer enough to their age to kind of speak to, um, just like they said, experiences um, professionally, what my experience has been, or be able to speak to just regular work-life balance. My style in the classroom is really to um, just kind of mix everything together. Um, if you spend any time at an HBCU, I'll say most, most HBCUs, um, what you'll find is a really good mix of the formal and informal. So culturally, we're really good with, um, you know, the pomp and circumstance. If you think about like homecoming, or you think about um, convocation, but um, culturally, we also tend to um, kind of let down our guard and relax. And so it was really fun to kind of have that same feel um, in the classroom. So we were preparing, let's say, go um, on an agency tour, just really being able to talk, to talk to the students about being prepared and having together a portfolio and, um, you know, being able to um, be, you know, make sure that you're dressed appropriately and all those like skills that I don't think get highlighted on, in any university sometimes. Um, and then it's also fun to kind of break down and talk about things that were going on in pop culture, things that, that, that the students actually really um, care about, or also, um, like Erica said, bring my, my work into the classroom and talk about what I'm doing um, in real time. So um, my experience as, as a, a woman has been, um, I definitely would get a lot of students that would want to talk to me about what is it like to be a woman? What is it like to juggle um, having to um, come to class? So my very first class um, was a 6 p.m. class. And you'd get the students that would say, you know, I've been in class all day, or I'm tired, or I work a, a part-time or full-time job just to be able to sustain myself for school. And it was, you know, fun to kind of say, you know, me too. <laughs> I'm working full-time and I'm coming in here and I'm teaching you. And so being able to speak about, um, sorry, being able to speak about how do you juggle that? How do you juggle um, some of our students, our parents, um, and, and late, you know, later in life students. So how do you juggle, you know, being a parent, having deadlines for work, having other other things to do and like that mix of life um, because I think that's really really important you know lately in the past you know few years self-care has come up as a theme and so it was fun to talk about even as a student like how do you just manage mentally um, when you're working in PR and you're stressed because it is a stressful you know job sometimes how do you handle that and all of your other duties um, has been really fun so I've loved being a resource and being a mentor 
And um, I think it was Erica that said, you know, come out of every semester with someone that just um, sticks and is emailing and saying, hey, can you tell me how do I get this job that I'm interviewing for or how do I put together this particular portfolio? So I think it's been a very positive experience across the board. I do want to get into uh, some of the, the teaching and uh, the questions who are coming up in chat and I'll get to those in just a second. Um, but I, I do want to ask you about, uh, we mentioned it or we discussed it on the prep call, just having systematic support for, uh, you know, adjuncts in the classroom, and especially adjuncts who are black or people of color. Do you have any recommendations or what looks like a successful onboarding process? I know a lot of people on the call hire adjuncts, but what does a successful onboarding process look like, especially to make people, uh, adjuncts feel welcome and included in sometimes a situation where you know, you have this hierarchy of professors versus adjuncts versus instructors, and how can that environment be uh, inclusive and welcoming for adjuncts? Um, so, uh, we'll start, Janine, I know you just, I'm trying to mix it up, so we'll let you start this time if that's okay. So I would just say um, proper onboarding. Um, really, if you're coming from a course setting and you're brand new to teaching, um, you understand obviously what it's like to go through as an undergrad. You may not understand some of the, um, I'd say pomp and circumstance that you see in a university setting, whether it be, you know, what, who's a, what's a chair? What does that mean versus a dean? Or who do I talk to for support, whether it be, I think any sort of um, like crash course to explain to a brand new adjunct, um, you know, who, who are the players? What are all the moving pieces? Um, who do you go to when you have questions? And just understanding like the different levels of hierarchy. I think if you work in corporate, um, you'll understand the hierarchy, but you need to know like what, how it kind of um, like, what, it, what is it, um, the different titles or just everything when you come over to the academic setting. I would say from a race perspective, um, I don't know that, um, like I didn't have as many challenges <laughs> coming into an HBCU, um, but I would say um, when we talk about like students just really helping um, an adjunct understand the socioeconomic pieces to some of our students. So I know at North Carolina Central University, like Erica said, um, you know, being African American um, or minority is not a monolith. And so really being able to understand like what's your school's population. Um, I have other uh, friends that are adjuncts or professors at other schools. And so they're able to talk about their demographics and kind of what to expect as you're coming into the classroom. Because what you'll see sometimes is that there's, um, there's a cause and effect of, you know, this is, you know, our socioeconomic situation, or maybe we're dealing with first generation college students. So expect to be able to, um, to navigate this particular type of way based on our student population. So any on onboarding is um, really helpful. Um, one of the things that I think worked really well at North Carolina Central University is inviting and including and really even expecting your adjuncts to come to um, your regular meetings and things like that to you. Advisement, even if you're not having to do an advi advising or really just understanding all the moving pieces so that you know and understand how important and integral your role is to your, your individual department. Great. What about you, Vanessa, especially coming in as a, a, a you know, professional in residence? So for me, um, coming in as a visiting, um, I was involved with everything. Um, <laughs> literally, I had sort of a, a seat at all of the tables. I was, you know, invited to every meeting. I really got to see a lot of the behind the scenes about like what it really is like um, to be a professor. And so that was really helpful just to understand like how the decisions are made, how um, new courses are approved and like all of the, you know, student advising, all of the different aspects of it. Um, from an onboarding perspective, um, I think that uh, I had a good experience in sort of, un, you know, being sort of welcomed into the the group. There, where I didn't feel any hierarchy. People were very, you know, eager and curious about who I was and my experience and wanting to sort of understand like what my interests were. So I felt felt very included in that way. Um, I think from an onboarding perspective, um, what. I wasn't prepared for is um, it's a, ver a very different scenario than working in corporate America, just the, the speed at which decisions are made. So that was a little um, like 
overwhelming for me, like how long of a process it is for things to sort of get approved. That was very different for me. And um, sometimes, you know, uh, just from a, a patient's perspective, it's like, why is this taking so long? Um, but from onboarding, I think that sort of having a better understanding, similar to what Janine said around um, some of the challenges of the students, I think that I very quickly sort of, you know, made my own observations and assumptions and was, was able to sort of be a resource for students, um, but also, thinking about sort of having a better understanding of some of the challenges of the program could have been helpful. I think that sort of knowing uh, some of the issues that maybe some of the diverse students were having that maybe I could have been helpful in uh, offering them a different kind of support maybe earlier. Um, and I just sort of some observations and conversations just at the uh, university level overall was that there was some there were some challenges or some um, expectations that weren't met around how diverse uh, professors were sort of um, uh, recruited and could, is there a better opportunity to sort of, you know, build that pipeline and ensure that there are more uh, diverse professors to sort of meet the demands and the needs of the, the school. I think that one of the things that was really good um, was how quickly after um, the murder of George Floyd, this isn't an onboarding, but just sort of the uh, an example of the school's willingness uh, to uh, offer some support was there was a lot of conversations between faculty and staff um, and students really engaging around diversity, equity, and inclusion, and what does an inclusive and you know environment look like, and um, sort of peeling back the curtain to sort of look at some of the challenges that were present and sort of working together around how do they form solutions. So to me, I found that to be very reassuring around um, you know maybe the. Uh, the professors and the faculty um, and the leadership didn't have all of the answers, but a true willingness to sort of come together and sort of have those uncomfortable conversations to sort of offer support. Um, and I, it looks like a part of the onboarding for this year sort of addressed, you know, some of the things about, you know, making sure that people had the support in place to be able to really work closely with the students. Copeland. So my onboarding experience with Virginia Commonwealth was, um, it was a good one. However, I had an advantage being that I knew all the players um, and I knew the style at which teachers taught. So I knew it. Um, I knew how syllabi looked, you know, and I, I came in just ready to dive in. Um, but I knew the questions to ask um, as a new professor um what are the resources to 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 look for um uh, a liaison or, or someone that oversees the pr sequence coordinating at vcu um was an excellent excellent resource because like myself he was also a master's student and then you know became a part of the the faculty so that perspective helped um i i would say for anyone who's new to uh, being a, a a professor especially in pr um like many of the, the the panelists said you know know your audience so what's the snapshot of the university as a whole what does that look like but then where you're teaching um what does that snapshot look like as far as the student makeup um i never really addressed race as a thing when i was onboarded um, I never felt um, onboarding was different for me as an individual or person of color. Um, however, I knew going into the classroom what I look like and what was happening in pop culture and how to weave that into what was going on in the classroom and just kind of marry that with um, the, the typical lessons that you learn in public relations as far as writing, pitching, um, building relationships. So the onboarding for me was was a good one, but again, I was also you know very immersed in the school anyway. Right. Sutherland, you've taught at several places, um, so why don't you talk about maybe the cultural of it, culture of inclusivity and and your your process of onboarding with your various universities? 
Sure. I will say, um, piggybacking off what uh, Vanessa Copeland just said, um, it's definitely important to know where you're teaching. Um, sometimes in some of my experiences, that information has been offered to me. Um, if it isn't offered, I typically ask, you know, what's the typical makeup of your students? What's the, the culture of the program? You know, what are some of the typical challenges, et cetera? I, I'd like to know that going in. And then even on a more micro level, the first day of class, you know, I make time to get to know my actual students um, in this particular class because of course even if you teach the same course every semester each classroom is its own makeup it has its own um, personalities and players so that's super important i also um, have found a, a tremendous resource um, mentors in the field i have two again i haven't gotten the permission to list their name but two amazing mentors um, in, in the pr teaching side of the profession um, who are very accomplished in their own right at two, two three different universities. Uh, one of them has moved around a couple of times since we worked together, um, but they have been an invaluable resource in helping navigate not only just one program, but academia as well, especially at a school um, like an LSU or another school where there is, you know, a strong majority one way or the other, um, and, and helping you learn kind of that behind the scenes um, impact of what a face like yours or an experience like yours might bring to the classroom. Um, I think going back more uh, on a broad level to onboarding, in addition to kind of that uh, demographic and cultural makeup of the university and the program and the class, I think it's also important to know where the university stands, what university initiatives are in place, not only for um, racial um, equity, diversity, inclusion, all of those things, um, but also in general about just general class expectations, program expectations in this pandemic. You know, do cameras need to be on? What are the attendance policies? Are there um, standards across the board? Or is it a program where each professor, you know, completely has their own a system um, and can apply it as they see fit? I've worked in different types of, both of those types of environments. And that's super important to know. Um, Specifically um, to where I am now, I must say, uh, the Georgetown PRCC program does an excellent job with making adjuncts feel included. Someone else said, you know, having the adjuncts attend the meetings, get to know everyone involved in the program, and know who to reach out to for questions um, has been instrumental, including being able to speak with someone, even if it's just a quick phone call or a quick Zoom meeting, speak with someone who has taught this class before, who may have um, example assignments and syllabi, especially if you're either new to teaching or new to a particular program, that is, is um, again, invaluable. Um, but also this program, you know, has made a very, very conscious and explicit effort to weave in the concept of, which is a newer term, but the concept of anti-racism throughout the program. Um, and I particularly, from my perspective, find that valuable because it, it really alleviates some pressure of professors of color um, or any other minority um, from being like the black professor who teaches the black stuff, you know, or whatever other minority you may belong to. You don't have to just go to this one professor or this one class to get that type of information or perspective. It's woven throughout. Um, and that, that understanding and that support is really not only comforting, but it's, it's efficient <laughs> um, for the program. And I believe students appreciate it. And it also, again, helps to alleviate some of what can happen is tokenism, you know, that you're expected to bring the minority perspective to all things in the program. Whereas if, if everyone, you know, uses diverse examples in class and has um, a diverse set of guest speakers, et cetera, um, talks about different perspectives on various issues, because as we know, the PR and field is this is not accounting this is not which even accounting can vary but as we know communications is ever evolving there is no one way that it, it works every time and if you follow this book you're going to succeed we all know it doesn't work that way so i think if everyone is bringing in the the different ways that we might make this profession work um throughout the program and the students are getting it in every class that has been um what I found to be the best way to not only onboard, but to um, structure a program overall.
anyone has any questions, please put those in the chat. Um, Dr. Sutherland, just to uh, piggyback on what you were talking about, how um, at Georgetown weaving in the anti-racism, uh, let's talk a little bit about the teaching in the classroom. So what sort of, uh, and I know uh, a lot of individuals are weaving it throughout instead of just having like a unit. Here's the DE&I unit of the day. So what sort of suggestions or tools or techniques that that people could use to make sure that uh, DE&I race is incorporated in everything they do? What sort of um, advice can you get for the people on this call? And I know it's really simplistic, but uh, you know we only have, <laughs> we only have a limited period of time that we're here. Uh, so Dr. Sutherland, why don't we go ahead and take it off with you? Okay, sure. Um, I think just providing resources or places to find resources. I think it's, you know, not on any one professor or even on the program as a whole to say, here's, uh, again, th there's no one way to do it. I think it's, here's some resources that you can read. Here are some diverse perspectives. Um, think about um, choosing textbooks or other readings that are written by different types of people. Um, and I think that overall, that kind of guidance is what's really helpful to bringing that to the class instead of putting the pressure on and say make sure you implement diversity and then that's the end of the conversation uh, because that is a, a lot of pressure and that means so many different things to different people um, me specifically i tend to in every lesson we talk about um i try to encourage and it's not always race-based but in general i try to ask um, students to Give their opinion on whatever the topic is of the day we have to, it's a graduate class so it's you know largely discussion based and then i'll flip the question and say okay what's a different perspective how might someone else perceive this and i won't put any other disclaimer on that if i wasn't me if i was someone else how might this situation present or how might this be handled in a workplace um and i think that that's something that has been you know really beneficial and like i said for me i've um in my current class i've brought guest speakers who you know all bring different diverse perspectives and the person i actually did bring to specifically speak on diversity equity and inclusion was of a different minority than myself um and i that was very purposeful um because I want students to, again, not only um, have a mindset that this person brings one perspective to the table, you know, I'm facilitating the course, but in that I'm bringing you a, a variety of different perspectives to consider. We've had readings that um, bring different perspectives than my own and different perspectives than what many of the students have. And I think that combination of, of resources, speakers, discussions, et cetera, help create that well-rounded experience. And if that's replicated kind of throughout a program, they really come out with skill set and, and set of perspectives. Those are some great suggestions. Thank you. Uh, Vanessa Wakeman. So, so um, I was able to create my own classes. Um, they gave me the sort of uh, blank slate to create classes. So I um, really tried to think about what things would be important for students to think about um, as far as, you know, uh, diverse and multicultural audiences, how do they sort of analyze these situations? And so we took a lot of things ripped from the headlines. I also had uh, clients and, and colleagues come in and speak about uh, issues around immigration, reproductive rights, civil rights, um, so that students who either were exposed to these issues and wanted to learn more, had an opportunity to sort of see like what the thread was for how they tell these stories. And for people who didn't have any exposure to any of the, the social issues, really to sort of start shaping their thinking. And so I think that there is certainly um, an embarrassment of riches of sort of like a diverse uh, real life examples that people can pull from. Um, I know that in uh, recent years, uh, professors have been very, very generous in sort of sharing some of their uh, curriculum suggestions and sort of resources around, you know, anti-racist or um, just sort of like multicultural communication. So I think a, a Google search will certainly uh, highlight a lot of that. Um, I, the other thing that was uh, really helpful was 
to not so much focus on like maybe what they had the students had learned in the past as far as like this is the way you have to do it uh, to Erica's point like the PR profession is constantly evolving and so I wanted them to sort of be able to think and I tried to present as much ambiguity as I could in a lot of the examples that I gave them because we don't always have all of the information when we're trying to sort of shape a PR plan or uh, you know it's a sort of communication strategy and so based on the information you have have where there's this opinion or you have this audience you're trying to reach or this audience who you're trying to sort of shift perception what would you do um, or for those who are saying like well how do we you know if we're doing something for the black community um, how do we shape the communication so that people sort of you know are aware and able to take action and so really trying to tie it into real life examples of what we're doing in the workplace today um, and I the one of the other tools that I think was helpful was to allow the students um, to disagree, um, to sort of have other opinions. And so um, my views are fairly progressive and liberal, but I didn't use any of that to sort of shape their opinions. I had very conservative students in my classroom. Um, and I could see in many instances, based on some of the content that we were talking about, they were incredibly uncomfortable. Um, but also sort of share, you know, uh, helping them to understand this is sort of like the breeding and testing ground right this is the last stop that student that people young people will have before going into professional environments so let's work out how do you work with a colleague who has a different opinion and still be able to provide what your client needs and so I think that that was really helpful for them in understanding how to work in uncomfortable um, situations and then also uh, furthering their understanding of some of the issues that may not directly impact them, but still still allowing them to sort of give their best work and their best sort of thinking towards solving a problem. Uh, Janine. Sure. So, um, I think this is really simple. Um, when you think about PR, one of the core skills you have to have in the job setting and media monitoring. And so, um, what um, I challenge my students to do every semester is um, you're going to pick an outlet and you're going to just monitor the news. So, we may um, compare. Uh, a headline or compare story or do a PR in the news kind of exercise. We're looking at how was something covered, um, let's just say a CNN versus a box, or how something covered locally versus regionally versus nationally. How are we talking about um, just the different things that are going on. So that um, gives an opportunity to talk about real life things that are going on and brings in some of that diversity because if you go and search, right, and do a sort of media monitoring, you're going to find um, different stories of all, you know, for, about people all different walks of life. Um, the other thing, too, that we do, um, very similar to Vanessa, is force that group work. Um, and so, even though um, my students, when I say we're doing a group project, they are just annoyed. <laughs> um, we always talk about how when you're in any sort of corporate setting or agency setting and you're working your audio is uh your audio is going in and out you have to rub elbows people that don't think or look like you and so have come to a common ground to you know work and, and achieve a, a goal together um but i think the main thing to um is just being really comfortable to talk about race when you think about working on a campaign, um, you know, for a client in an agency or a setting, um, the first thing you sit down and just see what we can do. What do they look like? What do they read? What do they, you know, what do they consume? And so, being as comfortable as you are when you're being paid in a corporate or agency setting to talk about who we're trying to target 
Uh, I think Janine just fell off, um, and I don't think she could she could hear me when I was uh, trying to uh, talk to her. Um, so let's uh, we do have just a couple minutes. So why don't we do the, a thirty second wrap up where if each one each person wants to just give like a thirty second wrap up of any anything they want to say, um, and and then we'll uh, start. So uh, Dr. Sutherland, let's start with you. Okay, um, I would say in general you know, ask questions, reach out. Uh, we talked on our prep call about how do you even get started? A lot of people want to know, hey, I'm a professional out here doing great work and I would love to share. Um, reach out, ask, network. Um, also, again, just keep that um, diverse mindset, um, you know, diversity itself as a term, you know, people have different opinions on that, but keep that diverse mindset um, throughout all that you do and, and ask questions. Don't be afraid to professionally push back if you see room for improvement. Um, and, and that includes in your program and beyond. There's a question in the chat about how to kind of incorporate this university-wide if it's not there. Um, and, and be a presence. Bring your authentic self at all times. And again, that means something different to everyone. And I think all of those perspectives are very valuable. And keep in touch um, with everyone you meet um, because those experiences matter. Just in closing a, a classroom anecdote, all of the speakers that I mentioned um, that I've had, the students, as much wealth of experience as the, the guests have, the students typically are most excited about, and interested to learn what is their journey? How did they get where they are? Um, how did they get through some of those doors? Um, especially if they are from a group where doors are often closed to them. So just keep those things in mind and um, let's all continue this conversation. Oops. Yes, great, thank you. Uh, Vanessa Copeland, 30 seconds. Um, I would say to keep the conversation going um, in the classroom, challenge your students with those assignments. Um, be strategic of what you have them do to learn about the profession of PR and the different facets and areas, but challenge them to, to kind of stretch themselves um, in meeting different people. Um, and something simple, back to the other question, um, is I, I have, I assign seats in some of my classes um, just to mix up, and it's so 101, but just to mix up who's sitting with whom, um, I do that halfway through the semester at times, um, and I may assign groups because I want to see the growth that will happen in very uh, opposite opinions that may be expressed in the classroom and what they do when they come together to work. Vanessa Wakeman, 30 seconds. Uh, I would say challenge yourself or be honest with yourself to uh, think about any biases that you may have that may prevent you from like fully seeing all of your students in the classroom um, and really think about how you can be present with them um, so that they can sort of really feel seen and heard and have the gift of your learnings or your teachings, excuse me. Great. Great, thank you. Uh, Janine, welcome back. We're just doing a quick 30 second wrap up before we wrap up, so. So just to wrap up, um, it was actually what I was saying before my audio went through, um, just being comfortable with um, talking about race. I think in our lifetime, um, it's been taboo to talk about race, to talk about politics and all those things. I think this year we saw the door kick wide open where everyone's talking about everything that was taboo and so now you have the opportunity to bring that into the classroom and get comfortable with being un uncomfortable and to talk about the things that traditionally we would say it's unprofessional to talk about because if you're going to be a, um, a good PR pro and if you're trying to raise up these good PR pros through these students they've got to be able to talk about race and on all these different types of things that are uncomfortable because ultimately it's going to help them um, serve their clients the best. And then very fast, uh, Kay Sweetser, Dr. Kay Sweetser wanted to say uh, about 30, 45 seconds about uh, the program that the Brimson is doing. So Kay, take it away. Excellent. Well, I know you guys are all educators, so you know who Glenn Broom is. Oh, that's upside down. Uh, he literally wrote the textbook along with Bailing Shaw, who's uh, here on this call, 
for public relations. And so at the Broom Center, um, we are investing in one of the projects that I came about as a part of one of my last very my last discussions ever with Glenn, and that is to invest in the um, tenure track uh, hustle type of professor who's an assistant professor trying to make his or her way along in the process. And so in the chat, I put a, a bunch of links for you, um, but we have the opportunity through the Broom Seed Grant um, uh, application process, which is due December 15th, for you to request funding for your projects. It was um, started last semester or last year rather, uh, and we, we granted two grants. And then this semester, this year, we're opening it up also to doctoral candidates. And so if you're an assistant professor or you're a doctoral candidate, please consider um, applying for a broom seed grant. And if you are a more senior professor, um, please share this with your colleagues. So thank you so much. I'm grateful to uh, the Institute for letting me talk and back over to you, Tina. Thanks. All right, to wrap it up, I wanted to thank you, Vanessa Blakeman, Vanessa Copeland, Jeanine Cargo, and Dr. Erica Sutherland for being here. We appreciate it. Just an FYI, uh, the Institute for Public Relations has partnered with the LeGrant Foundation on two $5,000 fellowships for students of color for 2021. Uh, the deadline is December 15th, and they will be doing a research project, which is really exciting. Uh, the links that uh, Dr. Sweetser shared and anything else will be sent following this event, along with the playback of the sessions. I wanted to thank you all for being here. I hope you, this is our last one of 2020. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving, eat lots of food, get some great R&R, and have a wonderful holiday. And I can't even believe I'm saying, but look forward to seeing you in 2021, which will be a better year than 2020. Yay. Bye, Bye everybody. Thanks I again thank to you. our speakers. You're all thank awesome. You.